Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yeah. A 40-year-old female presented to ER with complaints of right upper quadrant and epigastric pain since two days. On initial 10-second assessment, airway was patent, no pooling of secretion, breathing, respiratory rate for 16 per minute, saturation 99% in room air, air entry bilaterally equal. Coming to circulation, heart rate was 110 per minute, BP 130 by 90 millimeters of mercury, all peripheral pulsations equally felt and CRT less than 2 seconds. Okay. Coming to disability, GCS was 15 by 15, pupil secret reacting to light bilaterally and pain score was 6 by 10 and at that time uh, we have given an injection PCM 1 gram IV stat. Okay. Coming to exposure, temperature was 100 degree Fahrenheit and GRBS was 100, per, 100 milligram per deciliter. On reassessment, the pain score was 5 by 10. So after ruling out drug allergies, injection Ketterlac 1 ambium IM was given. Coming to history. A 40-year-old female with no known comorbidities presented to ER with complaints of right upper quadrant and epigastric pain since two days. It was colicky in nature and was radiating to back of abdomen over the right side. Since one day, she is having gradually progressing intensity of pain and started having fever spikes. She also had complaints of vomiting. There is no history of pain radiating to left upper limb with sweating or palpitation. No history of any dizziness or syncopal attacks. No history of any yellowish discoloration of sclera or itching. Allergic history, no uh, drug allergies, uh, no significant past medical and uh, past history. Uh, on examination, patient was conscious and oriented, no palarectra cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy or edema. Uh, per abdomen, abdomen was soft, there was right upper uh, quadrant tenderness and Murphy cyanosis. Say, per abdomen was soft and then you attain tenderness. How it can be? It's not correct. No. There is tenderness and it will be never soft. No. Bubble sounds were positive mm -hmm. uh, and other uh, all other systems were in normal, uh, normal. ECG, we had taken an ECG which shows a sinus, sinus tachycardia with no STT changes. VBG showing pH of 7.340, potassium of 3.8, sodium 132, calcium 1.19, glucose 99, lactate of 2, creat 0 0.98 and bicarbonate 22. Okay. We had taken a point of care CBC which showing WBC count of 13.1 with hemoglobin 11, platelet 2,90,000 and CRT of 83. Okay. Uh, so, we had uh, given uh, um, injection of CR due to increased CRT, we had given uh, SFMRSM cell uh, antibiotic IV 2 gram and we had did a USC abdomen uh, which showed uh, cholelithiasis 2.5 cm stone in the neck of gallbladder with gallbladder wall edema and thin pericholecystic collection. Okay. Uh, so, with a uh, we have done every uh, send MLS lipase also. Uh, MLS was 108 and lipase was 35. And LFT show was normal with no uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Uh, and RFT was also normal. Okay. So we had given a GI surgery consultation uh, uh, with uh, the diagnosis of cholelithiasis with coli, calculus cholecystitis. Uh, so they admitted the patient and uh, after uh, one to two days after subsiding the edema and everything, they uh, taken up for lab cholecystitis. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the classical presentation of a what? Cholecystitis. Cholecystitis, which will be the age group that you will have. So, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 fat, female, flatulent. So, 3F or 4F, whatever you want. That's the classical presentation of fertile age group has come with an acute onset of abdominal pain and uh, right hypochondriac abdominal pain and the most common cause is a gallstone cholecystitis. So, 90% of the time it is gallstone cholecystitis and uh, but uh, you can have a calculus cholecystitis also. So, a calculus cholecystitis what could be the reason? The inflammation of the uh, gallbladder, chronic inflammation mm. uh, which causes the uh, any per, uh, perforation or... So, how the, the pathophysiology happens uh, when you have a bile acid formed and it will be stored in the gallbladder and the cystic duct will get occluded as a result of the stone and resulting in uh, acute inflammation of the gallbladder resulting in pain classical presentation right hypochondriac pain radiating the shoulder with multiple episode of vomiting usually pain abdomen they will come fever in the initial phase you might not get but later on if the, it is going into a, something like a cholangitis and all, you will be able to get a episode of fever. So that uh, when whenever there is a fever that is getting developed, it is not a very good sign. So that is one important thing that you need to keep in your mind. So 
uh, you have to suspect this has a differential diagnosis and associated you can have similarly pancreatitis also. Sometimes you are doing an ultrasound, you are not able to find any stones. So what could be the reason? You are not able to find any stones. You are not getting any other cause for acute cholecystitis or any other reason for this also. What could be the reason? The most important one, transiently there was, would have been some obstruction. Okay, that stone would have passed on and you will not be able to recognize anything in the ultrasound. So that could be one of the presentations. So the patient had pain, had inflammation and he had this process. But when you are checking with the ultrasound or CT, whatever the modality, you are unable to see anything. So that is one thing that you need to keep in your mind. So uh, clinically it is very easy to diagnose. As you said, the Murphy sign uh, will be the most positive sign. And uh, what is Kurvers's law? What is Kurvers's law in this in this perspective? There is obstructive jaundice mm. with uh, this. Uh, Usually, gallbladder is not not palpable. Usually, gallbladder is not palpable. So, if you are able to palpate the gallbladder, it is a proven malignancy. That is one of the signs. There is some either neck of the uh, pancreas, head neck, head or neck of the pancreas, or there is some obstruction, and there is malignancy. We need to suspect that is the Kurvers's law. So, but when you are having cholecystitis, you will not be uh, able to palpate the uh, palpate the gallbladder as such, but you will have the classical tenderness while inspiration, deep inspiration and all, you will have the pain. So, as a first level of uh, uh, doubt and what are the risk factors for this, for developing acute cholecystitis? Any uh, obese? Male and female have equal predominance. There has been some female predominance before, but now what ideology is saying, both e have equal uh, predisposition for acute cholecystitis then? Obesity. Obesity then? Uh, the if, uh, type of food they are taken, fatty foods. Okay, fatty foods then. Any specific disease group or risk of developing sickle cell. So, pigmented stone sickle cell. So, that is one uh, group of patient you can uh, remember. Then, what are the different types of stone you can have? One is pigmented, pigmented stones, stone. then cholesterol, cholesterol stones, stones, then Calcium stones also, hypercalcemia, those who are having hyperparathyroidism, they can come with uh, gallstones also. So, these are the uh, common presentations, uh, etiology that you need to keep in your mind. So, age of 40, female, uh, fertile, that age group and uh, taking a lot of fatty foods, you need to suspect uh, uh, acute cholecystitis. Now, you said regarding amylase and lipase, why you have to send amylase and lipase? Initially, we uh, with epigastric pain radiating the back, the one of the differential diagnosis should be pancreatitis. Okay. Can we have cholecystitis with pancreatitis? Yes. You can have, no, obviously. The stone can cause the obstruction and you can have both these things. So, biliary pancreatitis, it's a possibility. So, that is a justification for that. Now, we have a patient with suspected as the most important part, you have started giving him an analgesics. So, analgesics, any of the analgesics, opioids or you want to go ahead and to give an SID, that is fine. Then the next option will be the diagnosis. How will you confirm the diagnosis? Which are the investigation modality of choice? Ultrasound. Ultrasound of abdomen is gold standard. Ultrasound of abdomen will be the best investigation. Unless and until you have a suspicion of what you wanted to do a CT. Any other diagnosis? Okay. Any other diagnosis or else you are suspecting a perforated gallbladder. Okay. So perforated gallbladder, even ultrasound can pick up. So sometimes you are suspecting a perforation or an emphysematous cholecystitis. So, we have an emphysematous cholecystitis or a perforation or it has taken on to other organ dysfunctions that the complication has increased, you might require a CT. So, routinely we don't need a CT. So, that is the most important thing that you need to remember. So, coming back to uh, the two things what I said, emphysematous pyelonephritis, or sorry, emphysematous uh, cholecystitis. What is the reason behind that? There will be the uh, organism, growth of the organism of gas forming organism mm. like Clostridium. Uh, so, so already it is there in the, there can be a gas forming organism and there can be initially to form a gangrene and form on top of that there can be gas forming organism resulting in gangrenous. It has got very high mortality. So that is a very important thing. So what are the expected complications of polycystitis? is perforation mm. then if there is delay in uh, seeking the medical uh, advice or in uh, old age patients or in diabetes emphysematous uh, cholecystitis can be happen then there will be on long standing cholecystitis it can go to chronic cholecystitis and causing uh, the uh, chole means go, uh, fistula between the gallbladder and the uh, bowel uh, and it can cause a gallstone ileus also so it's these are the complication local complication systemic complication 
uh, it can be called cause cholangitis mm. sepsis mm. uh, then multi organ dysfunction like cream. so that uh, that per se not very commonly seen but if emphysematous pyeloferitis and perforation is unattended okay. definitely they can go into peritonitis and all now coming to the uh, treatment aspects how as the ed physician how what will be your treatment strategy and what is the definitely treatment for cholecystitis uh, uh, initially the pain management is a mainstay uh, and iv hydration uh, if we are planning for any uh, surgical intervention keep an npo then uh, antibiotics should be uh, given no, what is the treatment of best option is laparoscopic cholecystectomy so that is the gold standard treatment you have a patient with acute cholecystitis immediately you take them for uh, lap cholecystectomy but when they are developing this perforation and all they might not take immediately perforation and all or there is a collection that is formed they may not go ahead and do an immediately unless until it is a life threatening the patient is otherwise okay with iv antibiotics they might do a what interval cholecystic interval cholecystic pain they initially what they will do they will put drainage. a pigtail drainage. drainage they will put a small pigtail and they will drain it and later on maybe after four to six weeks when the abscess of the collection that fragile tissue everything is converted they will go for an interval cholecystic tummy but emphysema is uh, cholecystitis okay. you might need to do an emergency cholecystic tummy you the patient will worsen very quickly now you said regarding antibiotics so what is the best antibiotics that you know of for uh, cholecystitis so what what will be your idea your your selection of antibiotic should be gram negative and if you are suspecting an emphysematous cholecystitis that anaerobic coverage also should be there and it should have maximum penetration in the gallbladder so that is the most important thing when you are dealing about a systemic infection the systemic infection blood stream infection you are giving it to the iv will be effective but here you need to think that the maximum drug penetration has to go inside the gallbladder so you need to select a drug so which are the preferred agent when you have suspicion quinolones to start off with quinolones was the first group of drugs which has got very good uh, uh, concentration and uh, on the bile as well as in the uh, gallbladder so that is the reason why when we used to start initially treatment of typhoid the carrier the organism used to be in the gallbladder so the quinolones used to be but because of the resistance we have moved away so quinolones is still a very good option not uh, for uh, uh, cholecystitis quinolone is a very good option then you have to think about the anaerobic coverage you need to add a metronidazole or anything so uh, ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin still a good choice but uh, as you said you have started on cefpirazon salbactam again it has got very good gram negative as well as anaerobic coverage also cefpirazon salbactam is one antibiotic it has got anaerobic coverage also may plus or minus you can add metrogel if you are suspecting an gas forming you are getting an ultrasound there are some air pockets you are seeing a ct there are confirm then you can add a metronidazole also below the diaphragm you have to start him on metronidazole so again fluid management is the key and most importantly they need to uh, take up for the surgery so after the uh, suppose you are managing it conservatively a group of patients not very uh, se severe acute cholecystic maybe a mild yes conservative management can be done but the issue is that they can have a recurrence of cholecystitis they can have so what are the advices that you can give to those group of patient uh, avoid fatty diets Uh, about sedentary lifestyles uh, so the weight gain all those things obesity is the main important thing cholesterol stone formation and uh, you need to chase for other causes as we said hypercalcemia if there is hyperparathyroidism causing hypercalcemia you need to treat that so you need to find out what could be the reason for cholecystitis so as the ed it is one of the easiest differential diagnosis for a right hypochondriac pain Uh, right hypochondriac the first differential is what we suspect is always cholecystitis and you can have hepatitis associated these are all the differential diagnosis but cholecystitis once you diagnose it uh, the problem is that the complication so a group of patient they can go into this complication where you need to elaborate and do the evaluation so that is the take home message so you have anything else prepared to discuss you can discuss that uh, when we are encountering with an acute biliary pain okay. if it is short lived no fever no leukocytosis it is a biliary colic mm -hmm. give analgesics uh, rnsf and to an elective usc if it is showing a goldstone elective management can be done okay. if it is no goldstone no bil non non biliary sources of abdominal pain should be find out mm. if there is prolonged fever with uh, fever with murphy sign and or leukocytosis suspect an acute cholecystitis do an urgent abdominal usc if there is goldstones mm. with gallbladder edema or sonographic murphys uh, or goldstones without gallbladder edema with uh, son uh, no sonographic murphys do a cholis indigraphy mm. it is positive both are acute cholecystitis calcus cholecystitis if cholis indigraphy is negative look for other causes and if there is gallbladder edema murphy sign without gallstone 
uh, it's cholecystography is negative look for other causes if it is positive then acute calculus called a calculus cholecystitis cause for a calculus cholecystitis can you tell me chronic inflammation recurrent cholecystitis so uh, we are seeing lot of dengue fever these days we are seeing lot of leptospirosis okay. see this dengue lepto they can cause inflammation for your pancreas mm -hmm. they can you are seeing lot of cases pericolic mm -hmm. cystic collection is there so okay. these are very common okay. reason that the very common tropical fever they can just come but they will not be very much symptomatic but because of the sometimes they might be very less symptomatic you get an ultrasound you rule out there is no stone then you treat the primary cause that itself will take care you need not give any further antibiotic maybe due to the whole inflammatory process that inflammation has also happened to your gallbladder more of an inflammatory rather than an infective process so that is one thing that we need to discuss anything else that you have fine so the take home message uh, right hypochondriac pain uh, the classical triad of cholangitis is what fever fever with chills and rigor abdominal pain and jaundice so that is jaundice cholangitis but before that itself you need to suspect a cholecystitis where a uh, patient age group of around 40 fat and uh, who is coming with abdominal pain one of the common differential diagnosis is uh, your uh, biliary colic or uh, gallstone and uh, cholecystitis you need to look in for other causes if you are getting a negative ultrasound usually ultrasound is a very good uh, evaluation choice but if you are getting a negative ultrasound look for the other causes of acute abdomen okay fine thank you